God forgive me. My name's Solomon Blay. I'm the public executioner. I dispense the administration of justice for the sheriff. It didn't start out that way, did it? I mean, a man's not born to be a hangman, is he? Lord Jesus, receive my soul. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. I deserve a thousand deaths if that were possible for the horrible crime I have committed. My husband, John is dead. Drink! The curse that has been upon me, strong drink, has caused all my misery. It be time, Margaret. I was convicted of the murder of my husband, John Coughlin, and sentenced to be hanged, and my body to be given to the surgeon for dissection. We'd both been drinking. He struck me several times and knocked my head against the wall, cutting my eye. He called me a bloody whore and took up an iron bar and threw it at me. I was the worst for drink. I turned back in passion, took up the iron bar and hit him with it. I destroyed him. I could see he was dying so hard. And I felt so sorry that I cut the razor. And I cut his Old Blind Tom was my witness. Blind Tom. But he could hear well enough. And his words will send me to my maker. Only ten minutes of deliberation it took. And the jury found me Jesus, receive my soul. Lord 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 Jesus, receive my soul. The penitentiary prisoners' barracks 
known as the Tench, was the unhappy home for convicts arriving from England. It held up to a thousand convicts and local petty criminals. In the early 1830s, an Anglican chapel designed by John Lee Archer was built next to the barracks for the convict prisoners and Hobart's growing local population. It was called the Trinity Church. Somewhat surprisingly, under the chapel were 36 solitary confinement punishment cells. They were very small, cold, unlit and poorly ventilated. The smaller cells were eventually declared inhuman and closed in 1847. In 1857, the poorly maintained and overcrowded Hobart Jail in Murray Street was closed and the prisoner's penitentiary became Hobart's jail. The chapel was redesigned with the nave and eastern wing converted to two supreme criminal courts. The western wing became the much smaller jail chapel we see today, with the execution yard and gallows from the old Hobart jail attached. The beautiful clock tower, the clock still keeping good time, the Supreme Court rooms and ancillary buildings remain largely unchanged after 150 years. Bill, you gotta help me. I'm in trouble. My God, what's wrong? Take my child. Take my child, Bill. I'd be in terrible trouble. I'd be a desperate man. I beg you, take the child, and you'll see me no more. Cullen will need watching. He's suicidal. He'll try to do it again. Bill, Bill took my child and he went to my place. And that's where he found, that's where he found sweet Betsy. Poor, poor Elizabeth Ross, in a pool of blood. I left a bloody tomahawk beside a body. God, it must have sickened poor Bill. A Hobart City engineer with two of his workmates dove into the water and saved me from drowning. They should have let me go. Hey, he's in the water! Give us a hand then. Come on. Hold on, we'll get ya. Carry it, man. Where's that rope? They reported that I was drunk, raving like a maniac and using disgust in language. You would too if you wanted to die. When they took me to the watch house, they discovered there'd be blood on my hands. But I only remember crying over and over. Betsy, Betsy, what have I done to you? They say on the way to the police court, I admitted killing Betsy because she spent the money I gave her on grog.
She should have fed my innocent child. So be it. I'd be full of remorse for what I did, but I have to say, we were both under the spell of that demon grog. It is hereby resolved that you, Alexander Cullen, shall, on the 18th of August, 1857, be hanged by the neck until dead, and your body sent to the hospital for dissection. Some call me the mad judge, others the hanging judge. But what do they expect? They come before me the dregs of life, murderers, rapists, thieves, I'm a fair and tolerant man, but quite frankly, hanging may be too good, too easy a way out for the likes of these vermin. I'll be with you soon, Betsy. In a better place. Is this the... Yes, Doctor, yes, Alexander Cullen. Did he die a merciful death? Aye, his neck snapped like a twig. Ah, then I be wishing you good day, Mr. Blay. And a good day to you too, sir.
it ended here for murderers and the like. Some lost and repentant, some defiant to the end. I was just young, 20, caught forging coins, 14 years transportation. Just like my father, he was sentenced to New South Wales for stealing coal. I came out on the Sarah, me, 250 other convicts. I got flogged on board once for insolence. They made me a constable here in Hobart Town, but I soon got into trouble. Six months hard labour for being drunk and taking a woman, she was drunk as well, back to the female factory. Dismissed, locked away. I tried to escape a couple of times, but got caught again. More hard labour. But then for some reason, I was offered the position of hangman by Governor Franklin late in the 40s. A few days after her 25th birthday, I hanged the first, Wallace and Watson, in Lowsiston Jail. Then a mate of mine, Cripps, convinced me to break into a house in Hill Street. We only stole a few clothes, but we got caught. Sentence, life imprisonment. They sent me to Richmond Jail. Four years hard labour. But then they'd bring me to Hobart Town, Oatlands, and Launceston Jail to do the hangings. But I tell you, I'm proud of my work as an executioner. I tried to do it as humanely as possible. I treated each client with compassion. Some of them I knew. I shook their hands, made them feel at ease. I finished them off in a decent manner. I was never a flogger or a torturer. I calculated my ropes. Height, weight, got the correct drop. Humane, that was it. No suffering, not even the worst felon. I know what they say about me, most despised man in the colony, the executioner. <laughs> Not true. I'm happily married. I to my loving wife, Mary. We live close by here. Still, we had no children. I, the trapdoor drops with an almighty clang. It's the most sobering, soulful sound you'll ever hear. How many people I've hanged? That best be known to me. Julius Baker, a fine young man, educated some, could read and write. May God rest his soul. I, my name is Julius Baker. I know where I went wrong. What can I say? A woman take you down. Her name be Jane Dingle, and she be married to a chum, Nicholas Dingle. They ran the government cottage at Port Arthur. Convicts like me in service. 
I was a constable. Two prisoners, Stratton and Donahue, have been given her husband money. Stolen from the Catholic clergy, Maguire. Thirteen pounds in all. She came up with a plan. Stratton and Donahue. We could get them off the land by fisherman's boat for the money. Then I'm take them out into the bush and shoot them. <laughs> Keep the coin. But it all went wrong, didn't it? Donahue and Stratton survived and made it back. I could have given them a second shot, but I didn't have a heart for it. I thought, I thought they'd croak out there. To save her arse, her and her husband put all the blame on me. Said it was my idea. That they had too much to lose. Still, you should have seen the fireworks when Dingle gave her account of the events in front of the Chief Justice Valentine. An old acquaintance, Mary Ann Morris, a married woman I bedded, let her into it. Mrs. Dingle, were you friends with Julius Baker? Baker was a friend of my husband. I really adore him. It was George Morris who told me Baker had bedded his wife, Mary Ann. You liar, Jane Dingle. My husband wouldn't talk to the likes of you. Everyone knows Baker came to see you. I am an honest woman with children at my side, you convict whore. You're a thorn in my side, dragging me down with all your conniving, lying ways. You were transported just like me. Don't forget it. Living in government cottage don't make you a lady. We all know what's been going on between you and Baker. Order, order. If you persist in this conduct, I will have you iron. Oh, nothing but a common trollop. You're just a troublemaker. You hag, I'll fix you so that no one ever looks at you again. You got Baker into this trouble, you conniving bitch, and he'll surely meet Solomon Blade. I owe the likes of you and him nothing. You women will come to order in my court. You cannot behave in this infamous manner in my presence. You know no more than my arse how to manage a woman. You outrageous, contemptuous wretch. I order that you be confined on bread and water on double irons until you are sent from the factory back to Wedge Bay. It was the only truth spoken at the trial. I was found guilty on one of four counts. It was said that on the 22nd of December, 1859, that I did with felonious and malicious intent fire a gun loaded with two leaded bullets at James Stratton. And now I just await my date with the hangman. I spend a good deal of my life within these walls, the courthouse. I think I know every dark little corner. Sometimes I think I know too much. It be said that in the dead of the darky when the moon be high in the heavens, 
Travel slowly down the stone-walled corridor That ghosts of those long ago Wretched souls travel past the broken wall And still roam the stone corridors under the courtroom Crying and wailing and demanding peace No one knows what apparitions from the past wait behind the closed doors Wait in the dark Forever Smash, 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 smash.